Thank you for watching this video. It's a follow-up to an older video back from 2022, where we talked about Azure Active Directory, which since was renamed to Entra, um, about the Workload Identity Federation. And we mentioned that another AD tenant kind of exchanging tokens between two separate tenants was not supported at all at that time. It would give a specific error. Recently, Azure Active Directory team or entry team released this blog post in which, uh, just from a couple of weeks ago, in which they talk about how to configure, manage the identity as a federated identity credential on an app and to be able to access Azure resources across tenants without using secrets. The way it work across tenants is by um, having a multi-tenant application registration and that application is then available in both tenants and allows access. There is also a document that got uh, published that describes how to configure these things. In this video, I wanted to walk through a little repo I created while I was experimenting with this to see what is supported and what is not. And the scenario that is supported is a managed identity, multi-tenant app, and this type of access. And what I will show is how to deploy this and how to test this and to show that what are the scenarios that are not supported as well. We're going to take through, talk through them. So in the video, I will use two tenants. This darker tenant will be my uh, tenant two in this diagram, this one. And the lighter tenant uh, over here will be the one in which I will create the virtual machine and uh, other resources to test. Great. So step number one, we will deploy the virtual machine that we will use for testing uh, uh, the managed identity tokens. All right, so the virtual machine got created and we are able to see it right here. Um, next step, what we will do is we will create the identity I'm creating it in CLI versus portal, just so it's a little bit faster and less clicking. We're going to get the principal ID, the object ID of this identity. We're going to use it to create assignments. We're going to assign this um, identity to the virtual machine. Okay. So this assigns it to the virtual machine. And we can see right now. We have the identity in the virtual machine that has the identity. Under user assign. Perfect. So after we did that, we will create a new multi tenant application in our Azure AD. And for this multi-tenant application, we will create a service principle in our tenant, same tenant. Okay. And if we look now, we will find it right inside of our tenant right here. So that's the app that we just created. All right. And we will add a federated credential to this application. So this is the application to which we will attach the credential. Oops. And we will modify this fix settings file um, with the federated identity ID. So this is going to be our managed identity. We're going to grab its principal ID. This is what we're going to be trusting. And this is the issuer. And how do I know to provide these values here is because that is documented right over here. It describes what the issuer should be, what shape it should take, what should be the subject, and what should be the uh, audience specifically for that. So we will define these properties right here and we will create this federated credential on the app. We'll double check that it got created. We'll actually go and take a look 
at the app to make sure that the credential got defined properly there. So app, you should be able to see the app, you should be able to see the federated identity credential and all of its properties defined as we discussed right here. Okay, let's see. Just to make sure everything is properly defined. Double checking on the ID 65E. Oh, I see I missed this. This is, should have been the ID actually. Let's re. Create this one really quickly. I noticed that it didn't look right. So delete it and we'll recreate it with the right property. May take a second for it to refresh that it knows that it's there. Got to do it, create it. Let's refresh and take a look. Take a look. It looks much better now. That's why I noticed that it wasn't correctly assigned. So it, now we have an app with the managed identity. So if you look at this picture, what we just defined, we created the VM, we created managed identity, we created the app, and we created the fix for the app. Now we're going to go to the second tenant, and we're going to create in a second tenant uh, the uh, service principle for this app. So to create it in a second tenant, we're just going to use the CLI command to consent it within the second tenant. So we got our CLI command. Let's create it in a second tenant. This needs to be a person with permissions to create service principles uh, for multi-tenant apps. And if I try to create it again in a second tenant, it obviously will not work anymore because it's there. And we can actually search for it in the second tenant right now by app ID. So we can see our multi-tenant app is there now. And what we will do is we'll quickly assign permissions to the subscription, the RBAC, to this multi-tenant app that we defined. So add role assignment, we'll make it a reader. We'll select it from groups, users, app. I think it's this one. I probably did not delete a previous instance. Let's just double check. Next review assign. Let's just make sure it's the right one so we don't have confusion later. So I clicked on it and I'm just double checking if it's a 3CA and it's not. So let's add the other app permission as well. It looks like I had one left over from previous. Select members and here we can search by Hopefully this is the right one. We'll double check. So we added permissions to the app. We really only needed one of them. I just had the wrong one in there from before. There was three CA is this one. And this is the right one, 615 CE. And this is the same one that we were after right here. Perfect. So we have uh, we created the permissions. So what we did just now is we created the service principle and we gave it permissions. What we will do next is we'll SSH into the virtual machine that we created. Let's just see what was its public IP. This is the public IP of the virtual machine. We'll SSH into the virtual machine. We'll trust the key, we'll clear the screen, 
and then we will get the token for from this virtual machine okay for the AD token exchange we will decode the token to take a look at it to make sure it looks good this this is the audience that represents the exchange this is my tenant ID which looks correct this is my object ID 65EE which looks correct based on what we created for trusting great so now we have this token we will put this in my local file right here I'll just clear out these previous tokens we'll put it under client assertion variable and we'll go into this test request HTTP and we'll use um, the Visual Studio H REST uh, plugin to just execute these REST calls. So we're going to exchange manage identity token for app access token and another tenant. Client assertion is that token. The other tenant is this one. We just need the client ID of the application that we created in the other tenant. So let's go back and take a look. Um, this is the app ID in the other tenant, same one as in the first one. And if we substitute it and try to execute this REST call, we will get a success and we'll get the a token back, right? We basically gave it the token from managed identity that we obtained right here. And we just made the call. Usually the SDKs will take care of all of this for you. In this example, I wanted to see it on the wire, how it works. Obviously you would not do this in production like that. And it gives us back the separate, the new, the new access token. And if we decode this access token, it will show us that it's for the management at azure.com and it's for the um, application ID 615 CC, which is that app that we created in the other tenant uh, and how does it know management at azure.com because when we were doing the exchange we told it so now if we take this token and we put it in our bearer token variable for example and then we go to make a call to the subscription in the second tenant with that bearer token to list the resource groups because we gave it a, re a reader access let's see if it works and it does work, we are able to use it to read the subscript, the resource groups in the other subscription. So we can see in this case, uh, we are able to access the other subscription from this VM token, the uh, app registration service principle in our back. So this works. What doesn't work? Well, what if you wanted to try to not have a multi-tenant app and just have an app in the second tenant with permissions with the Azure RBAC and then have this app trust this managed identity. The, in my testing, this is not supported currently. We can confirm it. So let's go to man, find a managed identity in the second tenant that I have. Let's take any of them. Federated credential. Let's add one, say other. For the issuer, we already have all the values from before. So I'm just going to close this screens to make it less confusing and we're going to grab these properties so this is going to be the issuer the subject is going to be the same subject as we were using of our managed up and we give it give it a name mi tenant one and this is the right property so we created this on this managed identity and this managed identity let's see if this client id hopefully this client id is the right one let's just find it in our tenant so this is the app id representing this and we're going to try to do the exchange. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the test calls and we're just going to try swapping this client ID. We're going to still go to the same tenant, still use the same assertion and see what happens. And we're going to get an error 
that says that AD issue tokens may not be used for federated identity flows. Notice it still uses the old AD issue token name in error message. And what's really interesting about this error message, it's the same one that we had two years ago still, right? But it was applicable before to everything, to all ADS issue tokens. But in our case, what this failure shows is that this approach from here to here directly is not supported. And the error message that we are getting is this one, okay? And another um, thing we may want to try is what if we wanted to create a manage, the, oh, I'm sorry, we just tried this approach, manage the identity to manage the identity, right? That's what we did. If we wanted to try manage the identity to an app here, let's try that next. So this is what we just tried and that doesn't work. If we wanted to create an app, we would go to enter ID, application registrations, new registration, app, um, tenant two. I hope I don't have an app with this name, so it's not gonna be confusing. And let's create a federated credential for the other scenario. Again, trusting this issuer. the same subject. Okay. And, you know, let's say MI tenant one and create this identity. And then we have this app ID right here. And let's try to see what happens to try to exchange token this way. We're gonna get a 404 unauthorized. We get a different error, enter ID tokens issued by this issuer cannot be used in another. So basically what this error is saying, this new error is that this approach, manage identity to this app, not supported. Here it was same tenant in a multi-tenant app, and this doesn't work either because of AD flows. So that basically shows that the happy path scenario of from here to here does work perfectly fine. And if we wanted to just confirm it once, one last time, for that we need to simply grab the app ID in the second tenant, still the same secondary tenant, and try to make the request. And we're gonna get the success we're gonna get a token. And obviously this token, if we put it in our settings as a bear token and do a call in the second tenant, it will work. So confirming that the new preview approach of going this way works and these two ways do not currently work. Not sure if there are plans to make the one of the other approaches work or not, but this is a huge um, beneficial approach for secretless access from this VM to resources in this tenant without any secrets, because it is managed identity, exchange the token and go and access it. Thank you very much uh, for watching this video. Take care.